What's happening guys? Today I am at Rocket Jump Studios with Mr. Freddie Wong himself and we are going to look at some of the slow-mo footage from the Tech Assassin today and uh, so real quick before we jump into it, yeah. what is your experience with Select Fire weapon? Select Fire? Yeah. Uh, not too much. Generally I just stick around with um, doing pistol stuff. You know, okay. I, think, uh, I think the most I've ever done is I went to Vegas. Everyone does this in Vegas. Oh, yeah. They do the full auto thing and the problem was when I, when I did the full auto AK at the range there I was doing burst fire I'm like okay well I need to stay on target so I'm doing like two yeah. three round bursts and yeah. the guy's like no just unload I'm like yeah no thanks I'd rather <laughs> <laughs> they're like looking at me like what are you doing you're doing full auto to, like, your, to, your, to your credit yeah, AK <laughs> is a little bit different than doing like an M16 yeah, or, yeah, yeah. Or, or 22 or something like yeah. that on full auto so an AK it, a lot of people don't realize how difficult it is just to stay on target with no, like just kicks like yeah nuts. it's it's crazy yeah. and then you have like the wooden stock there's really not a lot of recoil compensation and everything so why the 416? Well, so the thing is, one, of the M4 variants, mm -hmm. right, I've always looked at that 416 as like the, because first of all, H&K is good. They do their stuff well. Yeah. And I've always seen that. Come, at a, come at a price. That's true. That's what you pay for. <laughs> you pay yeah. for that fine German engineering, Absolute, absolutely. automobiles, weaponry. <laughs> um, so of the uh, M4, like, you know, AR-15 type variants, like, I always liked the way that one, it looked, I've always heard good things about it and everyone's saying like, this is kind of like that design taken to, to run through that German engineering filter sure. and like perfect it, so to speak. So I've always wanted to try it out. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's definitely one of the, the better select fire rifles out there. And that, of course, is a personal preference. You know, <laughs> everyone's like, oh no, I hate HKs. They so, they're so expensive. But, you know, to your credit though, it is true. I mean, a lot of times you do kind of get what you pay for. Yeah. A lot of people will cast stones at Barrett and be like, oh my God, those things are so overpriced. But a lot of people don't realize I, I, I don't personally own an M82 and uh, because they're, they are pricey. I just can't yeah. afford one. But the M82 that I shoot in just about every single video, I've pumped, no joke, 10,000 rounds yeah. plus out of it. And this is, this is a, a, a lot of gas going through a 50 yeah. BMG round and no issues. I've had maybe four stovepipes out of 10,000 rounds. Mm -hmm. And you know, I mean, that's just me being on the trigger yeah, and it's yeah. not really meant to be shot like yeah, that. Yeah. What I'm curious about is being that you, you deal with VFX mm -hmm. on yeah, yeah. a day-to-day -day basis, is there anything that you like, you know, is all oh, the shape of the, you know. Well, you know, I'll tell you what, here's something that's interesting is that a lot of people, there's a lot, when it comes to guns, like real life guns, way more smoke than black. Yeah. Like, it's just more, uh, in movies, what's happened is that movies trained you a certain way. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the, the blank rounds, even from the beginning of like uh, visual effects in Hollywood, and special effects, the blank rounds that they use are specially formulated to give you a big, yeah. showy flare out of it. Which is, when it comes to like actually shooting for what you know for what people are usually shooting for, it's like not necessarily the most ideal thing to have a exactly. giant flare coming out in front of the gun. So if you take a look at this, right, it's like it's all smoke there. You don't see like normally you would expect a big. Yeah, the starburst. Yeah, yeah, no, not, not at all. Um, it's a lot more smoke, usually. And it's one of those things where it's always kind of trying to work with, like, well, what are people expecting out of, out of a movie gun? And what are people, and what are movie guns like in real life? You know, I think the big thing you see here in movies all the time is the clickiness, right? Yeah. And I, see, I think it's cool because the clickiness is like an emphasis of that action. It's like it, complaining about the gun being clicky in a movie is like complaining about a kung fu sequence and it's like you hear the fists moving around. It's like, no, if you listen to it, <laughs> my fists no. ain't making sounds right now. I'm Asian, I'm listening to it. Yeah, and a lot yeah. of people don't realize that too, is um, the difference between uh, a blank, a lot of times they do put uh, powder in there that creates mm -hmm. a, a, a brighter muzzle flash than, you know, most of the, the ammo that you buy these days isn't going to generate that unless you have a really, really short barrel yeah, or you exactly. use like really, really old ammo that's yeah. maybe surplus or something like that to get that kind of muzzle flash that you want out of it. Now, what would you think about the, the optic on there and everything? Do you have any preference? Now, I, I, I like so, jumping up into these conversations with people just because a lot of people are like, oh no, I love EOTX. Yeah, I yeah. love aim points. So the difficulty with me is that I'm a left eye dominant, right handed shooter. Really? So when it comes to rifle stuff, it's always, I'm always like kind of fighting that urge to squint in order to get the proper sight picture coming out because I'm always what? fighting my natural inclination. I have no idea why that is. When I mean, did you find that out? I found that out, um, gosh, 
they did that thing in like school where they're like, hey, put your hand up on no, the clock. Yeah, and that's, that's, like, that's what our, our, our being an uh, NRA um, <laughs> rifle, pistol, and shotgun instructor, that's what they, they tell you. Like, you, you have yeah, to do, you have the, to whole, do the, the whole the, thing. The DDP yeah. diamond cutter <laughs> to find out whether or not somebody's left eye or right eye I think, dominant. So I think part of it is because, like, naturally my right eye is, like, worse uh, vision wise. So mm -hmm. I think maybe growing up, I, I don't know what it huh. is because my brother is not that way. My brother is right eye, right, uh, right eye, right handed. Well, it's um, good that you know that at least. Yeah, so it, so which is part I think part of the reason why I like pistol stuff so, so much is because I don't have to worry about being proper. I can just be in the proper position here and I'm right. and I the proper sight picture. So pretty much any sight, the the more like in your face that reticle is, the better I can see, I see. it because I'm always fighting that urge. And I, you know, and part of it's like, well, maybe I should just learn to shoot left-handed in order to take care of that. Um, I don't know. I, don't, I, I see that's why I don't really spend so much now, time. Now, but see, that's another thing too. You have a very unique situation because being that you use firearms, be it that they're airsoft or whatever, on a really frequent basis, a lot of people don't realize that the airsoft guns are so similar to yeah. the actual weapon systems these days that a lot of people will train off of those. Um, oh, they're fantastic know. for it because you don't you you learn you learn to to do proper trigger pull absolutely to the point where. Like I don't really spend so much time with the, the real stuff because you know just it's California. It's hard to get out to those places. Um, but when I go out there, I have it's like it's, you're already kind of locked in. I will I will attest for Freddie. <laughs> it's like it's like I was very impressed, very impressed with pistol and rifle handling skills because uh, you know I just I, fake I, it. I, it's all fake. I, it until I, it looks I good. expect I expect you to come out there. I think I even have some of that footage of you of you uh, shooting and everything. But your form is is really really good. Have you have you taken any like training no, or anything like that? None of that. You know what it is? It's it's having done having seen enough movies to know what looks. Bad, oh, that like hurts. Really bad. Because there's a lot of movies where it's like, I remember, gosh, there's a lot of movies where it's just, you know, like really yeah. high shouldered, like one eye totally squinted, you know, coming yeah. around the corner type of stuff. Uh, no, I've, I've watched my fair share of okay. ridiculous DVDs. Because I know, I know you went you went out to uh, Taryn's range, right? Yeah. With, we with had the chance Tom. once. We have, a we have a friend of ours who, um, uh, he knows this guy, uh, Taryn Butler, right? Taryn Butler, yeah. He was a three gun champion. Dude is dude is amazing. If you it, for all of you guys who watch my stuff and uh, on Rated R, I know he you is. guys all know who Taryn Butler is. But for those of you on the Tech Feed audience and everything, check Taryn out. Dude is amazing. He's <laughs> scary good. He's shooting. amazing. Like, and he and he was out shooting everybody. We were going. Yeah. And we were going with guys, you know, former SEAL, former uh, sorry, former Army Ranger. So we got the chance to go to his range. He's like one of the guys. He, he does a lot of movie. Dude, he trains a lot of movie actors. For, oh really? For film roles okay. because. He has like one of the closest outdoor ranges, and it's like just on the edge of Ventura County. Yeah. So LA County can't do that, but Ventura County, I guess, you can. So it's like he gets a lot. Of, he trains a lot of these movie guys. So yeah. it was cool to see a dude who has trained so many people from no experience with firearms whatsoever to having to look like they are professionals with firearms. His process of like what are the fundamentals that he emphasizes, yeah. and what what are the form points that you need, that you need to know to even just fake it. And even, and, and I guess with this form, with faking it, you already yeah, get like 90 Did he run like through that. some stuff with you guys? He did a little bit. Yeah, nice. it's really cool. <laughs> Man, that's that's fantastic. Yeah. Going out to Terran's range and catching yeah, some was, stuff like that. That's and, was, and also we got to see him shoot and we're just like, how are you even hitting these things? Like, oh just, my God. It looked like he was constantly falling over how fast he was going. It was just everything. Just, just pinging. Yeah, and it's, 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 like, a lot of you guys don't realize too that it's not just, it's not just being up on target. Like he shoots from the hip. Completely as accurate as he would yeah, if he's scary. up on site. So it's 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 pretty scary how awesome he is. But uh, let's m move along here to the PlayStation, right? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or let's, let's look let's look at Brandon because Brandon's not here, so we'll yeah. We'll, we'll, uh, he's got he's got the Carnicon Death Face on yeah, he's right got now. The, and the and a good tight up high shoulder. Oh yeah. He's he's got a he's got a visual on target right there. Oh man, that, that this gun. Is and it's funny too because you know, again you see here no flare, a little bit, little just a bit. touch of a flare, just a little bit. Yeah, that's. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll pull up the uh, PlayStation real fast. And, uh... First one, right into that, the CD. Yeah, no, it that, that <laughs> went right into the disc player. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Well, that's what you Playing through. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Flex in that plastic. 
All right, I could talk about slow motion all day yeah. long. Now I know you got a lot of stuff going on right See, now. It looks, and the funny thing is, when you're at when you're at this level of slow mo, stuff looks fake. Like it doesn't look real anymore, right? It does, and it, so you know when it comes to to shooting slow motion and stuff, a lot of people don't realize that like, you really need a lot of light. Yeah. You need to backlight stuff, otherwise yeah. it's going to be completely flat and it's going to look like it was all done in post. Yeah, 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 exactly. Well, I know you got a lot of stuff going on. Why don't you tell me what, what, what's happening in the world of Freddie Wong right now? Oh, yeah, so on uh, July 20th, we literally you picked the day to come by where we just released the trailer mm -hmm. for Vegan High School Season 2, um, which is the second season of our web series that we did a year ago. And the second season is starting July 25th. It's going to be on our site, uh, rocketjump.com, and also on our YouTube channel. Sweet. Now, what's what's the difference between Rocket Jump and the uh, YouTube channel? So the channel? big one this year is we shot like a mix of frame rates. So we did like 48 frames a second, which is like a high frame rate, kind of what The Hobbit did, mm -hmm. and regular 24. Um, and we're, we're jumping in between those within the episode. So it's like all the in-game footage is at this high frame rate because it kind of looks like a video game to begin with. So it's mm -hmm. like, oh, okay, perfect. It totally works. So we have a player on our site that can play back at 48 frames a second. You kind of need a beefier computer to handle it, um, but it looks really cool. And okay. it's no other, there's no other player. On All right, the I'll, I'll check it out on my Dell that I got in, <laughs> in like 2004. It might be, it might be enough, you need some memory. Get some so memory does, does that higher frame rate uh, help as far as like the visual effects and everything's it concerned? Looks, it looks different. It looks, it's a way of like visually setting up those sequences in a way that makes them look different. So. Um, it's smoother, it, it's more fluid, uh, and I think the video effects look more interesting. And it's not gonna be it's not gonna be everyone's cup of tea. Some people just really don't like that look, which is fine because you can always watch it in regular 24. But for people who are <laughs> aficionados at the cutting edge, we have that. I hate it! I hate <laughs> it! We have that taken care of. <laughs> well, bring me back my 24p! <laughs> I want it! Exactly. <laughs> Well, cool. Make sure you guys check that out. Uh, VG, VGHS. No one can pronounce that. VGHS okay. season two. Yep. <laughs> what was your favorite? What was your favorite part about season one? If you had to pick like well, one, one, one sequence. So we got one chance. We got a day where we got to sh uh, drift, do the drift racing sequence with uh, Von Gittin Jr. We just oh, got to nice. sit in his car. That was so much fun. I guess right. the best roller coaster in the world is driving a professional car race racer. Yeah, I, I haven't had the opportunity to do that, but yeah, we, we, we we travel to some remote locations and try to pretend that we are every now and then. Yeah. <laughs> All right, make sure you guys check out VGHS Season 2. Don't forget new episodes every single week on Rated RR, and new episodes are reloaded right here on Tech Feed. See y'all next time.